All right, it's Sister to Sister. It's going to be a great show today. What is your must read book besides the Bible? I've got a great one. You're going to be surprised. Also, what about Lucky Charms? Are Lucky Charms okay? Do you believe in them? And also, what about that prudent wife? Let's talk about her just a little bit. We'll see you in a few minutes on Sister to Sister. <music> Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. You have joined a panel of Jesus girls and we come at the problems of the world from a biblical perspective. So I think you'll find our opinions very interesting. And the first question I have is something that we've talked about before and I think it's probably come up in, in your home too. And this is about traditional marriage. The Duggarts, that's the family that has all the kids, they took a stand for traditional marriage 19. on... 19 kids on their TV show, and many called for their show to be canceled. This is becoming normal when traditional family values are brought forth. So what do we do, okay? No, do we step out? Are we fearful for stepping out, knowing that we're going to be condemned every time? Is this something as a believer that we need to be prepared for when our opinion differs from the world? I think most definitely when our opinion differs from the world, it's supposed to differ from the world. That's right. That we, we talk about being the salt of the uh, earth, and we talk about being that light and, and, and not hiding our light under that bushel, you know, being that light mm -hmm. that, that, that on the city, uh, on the hill. And uh, we talk about all those things, but when it comes to stuff like this, we let the world influence us. Right. And because, uh, see, I'm not running for a popularity contest. I was never into all of that. I'm not into pageantry and all of that. I'm into Jesus Christ. And you hate what Jesus and God hates and you love what he loves. Now, the thing is, is how do I do it? That's, what, that's where you cross the line. If someone is caught in sin, I'm, I'm a sinner. Right. Okay. So if, if someone is in, in the act of something, yes, I think the love of God to love them out of it. But you don't, we, we did a whole show on enabling. Yes, we So have. what is it that we as Christians have become so fearful? Talk about fear. We did a show on fear. Fear paralyzes. We don't want to say what's right because we don't want people to look at us different. I don't care if you look at me any different because you have your opinion and I have mine. Mm -hmm. But my opinion is based on the word of God. And if you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you about it. But right is right and wrong is wrong. And that's just it, cut and, and dry. That's it, right. Yeah. So I, I think in this age of, you know, it's supposed to be the age of tolerance, but... They're using tactics of intimidation instead of the public form of debate. You know, we need to get back to debating issues instead of intimidating people into our points of view. So that instead of saying, calling for the show to be canceled, let's have an honest debate between the two people that are, have a disagreement or dis right. differing points of view. Right. And let then the people decide where they stand on it. Instead of dismissing it, trying to get rid of a different point of view, let mm -hmm. them have a discussion about their different yeah. points Well, I think of view. what people are permitted, they should be permitted to have their own opinion. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when the Duck Dynasty people came under so much ugh, fighting, um, that show was going to be canceled. But guess what? The public rose up. Mm -hmm. And the network decided not to cancel the show because there were too many people watching. So right. I think that the public... That was about money. Not yeah, was that, well, that was. If yeah, that's was, right. Because if that was about money, but when we as Christians, when it's about what's right, that's the type of stance we need to take. Right. And too often we don't. Right, that's but true. But I don't think it's fair to say like all Christians and all believers aren't standing up for family, traditional family that. values. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I think there are people that are using their voice to be heard. But my, my prayer would be this concerning the issue of homosexuality. God, give me the grace and the wisdom and the love that when I'm talking to them and communicating with them, that I can somehow reach them and draw them closer to Christ. Because my opinion will not change them. I just want to love them and let the Holy Spirit do His work but I don't in think we're them. Well, I, I, for me, I'm not talking about opinion. I'm talking about the Word of God. Right. Yeah. And, and, and He that winneth souls is wise. And yes. the only way to effectively do anything in God is to do it through love. Corinthians right. clearly tells us that. That 
I don't care what your gift is, whether mm -hmm. you prophesy, right. whether you teach, all of that will cease. And none of it is of any good. If you give your body to be burned, if you give, you know, to the poor, whatever you do, if you don't do it with That's love, enough. it has no, no effect. Right. So yeah. I don't think the challenge is right. about our opinion. And I don't, I'm not going to allow the gospel to be watered down to my opinion. It is the word the of word. God. Right. Period. And that's what we stand on. And mm -hmm. I think if you're watching us and you have watched us for any time, that you understand that we have a different take on everything because of the Bible. If you've never opened your Bible, today would be a good time to do that. <laughs> and you know, the second question that kind of goes along with this, and Flo, you, you've, you've made, made it clear, how do you distinguish between taking a stand for something that you believe and then, or judging? Right. Because we... I don't see those two things being so closely related, honestly. I mean, I think taking a stand is what we believe in. Judging is when we are taking what we believe and we're saying to somebody else, right. you must believe what I believe. Right. Right. And because you don't, you are X, Y, Z. And so I see those as two separate things. And I think we have to be super careful as Christians with judging. And I'm not just talking about this homosexuality. Right, it's right, any right, issue right. as Christians mm -hmm. with other Christians or with people that aren't believers. We are not called to be the judge. That's God's job. Mm -hmm, that is good. not our job. Right. We are called to stand on our beliefs. We are called to take a stand. But we are not called to judge. That's right. good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Our, our basis that is the word of God by which we by which we base our life upon yes. and we base our judgment but we do have to judge fruit we look at the fruit and we see the fruit you know and and, and we do have to judge by the fruit that's what the scripture said yeah, i like it this is this is good conversation because we all have different opinions but i love what flo said and it's the wisdom of flo and that is the gospel is not watered down by our opinion right. and thank you for that sister Mm -hmm. But speaking of my sister, I, I don't know if you're a reader other than um, the Bible, which I think we all do read, but what other kind of book or what's your must read book? I have one. Do it. I love Christian historical fiction. Yes. And so Francine's, Francine Rivers has the list. Mark of the Lion trilogy. <laughs> that is incredible. If you haven't read it, you must read it. Three books, you will plow through them and they really like change it's, it's taken place after Jesus has died on the cross and it's the church and it's historical and it's, it's amazing. And wow. that was my book too. Yeah. Wow. So, really? Yes. And I had is that you too? Oh, oh no. Yeah. Okay, well the author that we're talking about is named Francine Incredible. Rivers. Yeah. And she, so do you know when you read John Grisham or any of the um, books out there in the world, do you know that the Christian bookstores and online have exactly the same kind of things, but Jesus is in it. So there's Christian fiction that is amazing to you. Francine Rivers is just one of many, many, many authors. But Francine Rivers' books take take it to the heart mm -hmm. for those. Well, I'm a, a serious book fiend. I am a huge reader. I read constantly, but I read fiction. I'm a yeah. fiction reader. Mm -hmm. And I agree with the Francine Rivers, but I have to say C.S. Lewis, he's on my must yes. read list. Yes. I mean, Chronicles of Narnia mm -hmm. and, and also Screw Tape mm -hmm. Letters, which is so yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but I also um, love the classics. I think those are on my must read list. There's um, To Kill a Mockingbird, right. um, mm -hmm. The Scarlet Pimpernel, which if you haven't read, yeah. it's so awesome. Um, I read it in 11th grade. Oh my gosh, yes. it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I don't remember. I, I, I read it in 11th grade. <laughs> <laughs> but all those, and, um, and Anne Rand's um, Atlas Shrugged is another Very one good. I think is a must read. Oh, you little oh. classic girl. Girl, with your hair all classic. Yeah, yeah, oh, right. who wouldn't not know? What do you like, Miss Attorney? Well, I like Watchman Nee. Going who? back, yes. Watchman yes. Nee. And Prayer. if I'm anybody needs yeah. to be have mm -hmm. a firm foundation in the principles of Christ, yeah. mm -hmm. it's Watchman Nee, the normal li Christian life. Yeah. And he goes through in a series of sermons. It's not actually a book that he wrote, but someone compiled a series of his sermons. And he was a Chinese Christian who spent much time in jail. And uh, he went through in this particular book, the first five chapters of Roman in a sermon kind so of way. So this is a nonfiction. So non where would I find it? Religious nonfiction. Right. All yes. right, good. What do you have there, Flo? I think, well, 
I have so many of them, so I can't list them all. But one of the ones that I use constantly, especially in leadership uh, training, is um, look. I got to look at the what 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 the name of it was. The, the tell Tell of Three Kings. Um, oh, you yeah. mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, I, so I really good. like that by Jean. And um, who wrote it, that? Jean and uh, Edwards. Jean Edwards. Yeah. Write that and, one down. Um, tale of two, tell, Three Kings. Tell, tell of Three. Tell All of right. Three Kings. Mm -hmm. And I think it has, because it has a lot to do with your character mm -hmm. de development. And I love C.L. Uh, Lewis and, yeah. um, and, and yeah. Watchman Nee mm -hmm. and, you know, um, Edward uh, Ian e. Bounds and yes. and um, just uh, so I, I love those you type love of books. books. Oh, we love yeah. books. We love books. We're well Frank read. Frank Peretti. Frank Peretti is good too. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I have one little last question before mm -hmm. we wrap this particular mm -hmm. segment. So I need one person to tell me: Does God need us? One of you, yes. give it to me. Yes, 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 I yes. Say no. no. <gasps> yes. I say no. Yes. No. Here, 1 Corinthians 3, 6, and 7. I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. So God does not need us. Acts God 17, as though he needed anything, God needs nothing but to give us grace. I don't know if God needs us, but I need him. Amen. <laughs> and I pray that you stay right there because we'll be back with lots more sister to sister right after this. And let us know what you're thinking about what we're thinking. It's been an interesting segment so far. <laughs> don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sister to Sister. You're going to find interesting conversation from around this table every Wednesday, so don't ever miss an episode of our show. Ever. But ever, ever, or you can watch it online, you know that. Um, this is a good one, too, because as we're talking about public displays of faith, which is what, what, what this show is about today, what about prayer at the public events? And you know how the, the kids can't pray at the commencement, and I'm getting a little ticked off about this. Kids could pray at commencement, but it has to be student-led. Uh, but this particular question leads to the issue in Alabama. The city council opened with a Wiccan priest what? who prayed to the goddess of the earth. And so I think mm. we have to realize as Christians that if we fight for our rights to speak in the public forum, right. that others may have to too. And I think the court found that, mm. or at least that the, the council decided, not the court, that it didn't coerce religion it was just a solemn prayer. Mm. So I think there's a distinction. There was a, a, a Supreme Court case of favorable to the Christians in Greece, New York, where there were Christian pastors who prayed at the city council meeting, but the whole town was, were, were Protestants, right. were Catholics, right. they were Christian. But now you have a town of bigger and diverse people that if you want to apply the law to the same yeah. thing, yeah. we may have to be open to permitting other faiths to mm -hmm. also pray, as long as they don't coerce participation mm -hmm. in their particular so religion. Then, then, we don't, then, they, then they, meaning the powers to be, don't want us as Christians <clears throat> to coerce participation either. Is that what you're saying? Right. They could, the, the, the Supreme Court said solemn mm -hmm. uh, prayer is fine. And if it's conducive of what's been done traditionally in the past and does not coerce participation okay, in well, a particular a, religion. Good. So mm -hmm. although I might not agree with the Wiccan priests, I don't agree with their agenda, I don't agree with their, their theology, but what do we do if we're faced with a law that we want all faiths to have right. their and, and if you haven't been watching Sister to Sister on a regular basis, you might not know that Roxanne is an attorney. So we, we do go to her Sometimes, on questions yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you, anybody else on this it public kind of reminds me of when there was that big to do about the nativity scenes in the cities. There is a big to do. Uh, yeah, ongoing. and it's still sure. and it's ongoing. But it's um, it, they were they were having to allow like atheist groups to hang a sign that said mm -hmm. like there is no God next to the nativity. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. this is like a world gone mad. Seriously. Mm -hmm. It, where is, I mean, I think they came down, and you can correct me because mm -hmm. you're the attorney, but that it's it, it's a traditional representation of the holiday season, so they allowed it, but they had right. to allow they all allow the other the mixture, things. You know, the snowflakes, the Santa, the right. other things, in addition mm -hmm. to the religious types of the, the uh, menorah 
and the crash, mm -hmm. you know, the manger. So there was. Yeah. It brings up agreed. anger in me. Yeah. <laughs> it Somebody does. At, at, at just our local elementary school just said we don't want any Christmas Jesus related Christmas papers going out at all. So their one decision made change the whole school. You better have them call the ACLJ. Yes. Or one of and so you know we get hol you know holiday just basic papers, but we do get. Jewish papers. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you right. see the menorah on so there. Like it's, you see, it's, you see mm -hmm. the representation of other things. Mm -hmm. But then, when it comes to Christmas, it's Santa. Well, right. that's just we're talking about the the Christmas <coughs> season. But when we go throughout the year, right. and we're right. talking about graduations and at football games and right. at public displays, and so we have to, in my opinion, we have to forgive when we don't agree. And that brings me to my next question. Do we have to forgive? Is it hard to forgive? <laughs> do we do it? Do we have to? Uh, yes. Shaking your head, shaking yes. oh, I think Flo, if we, yeah. do we have to forgive? According to the Word of God, we have to. Um, and mm. as an act of our free will, um, you have to sometimes make choices and bind the strong man that's assigned to your will so your will can be freed up to make the right decisions in God. Like, um, I choose to forgive political figures who have ran for a political a place of, um, you know, political influence in a Christian nation that now wants to convert us to something different. Mm -hmm. You have to make that choice. But I also have to stay awake and alert because when you stop me, my child from praying in school, then I will I not be able to pray in my home next year. And, I, and I, as people, um, you know, okay, if you're across the street and you have your manure on your lawn, why can't I have baby Jesus on mine? And that's not, it hasn't reached that point yet, but I can see it coming to that point. One time I heard um, someone say about unforgiveness, which I don't even know if that's technically a word, but when we choose not to forgive, it, it has that bitter root inside mm -hmm. of us. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's like taking poison Poisonous. and expecting it to yeah, hurt the other person. person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, for years, I lived under a wrong assumption that if I wasn't asked for forgiveness, that if they didn't ask to be forgiven, <laughs> I didn't have to forgive. That I was, I was like, I can hold on to this because they haven't asked me for forgiveness. They haven't, they haven't said, you know, I was wrong. And I, I was called out on that and said, no, you, you need to forgive. That doesn't, that doesn't mean what they did wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't release them from consequences, right. but that releases you from right. that bitter root. That's and right. that was freeing right. and right. powerful. I think it's wow. important too, though, when we talk about forgiveness that people don't understand, uh, that, excuse me, that people understand that it's like not just a one-time gesture mm -hmm. because there is a process yes. for it. That's and true. I know there have been yes. times that things have happened mm -hmm. in my life and I thought I had forgiven the person, mm -hmm. you know, That's but there's good. still the sting in the yeah. memory yeah. and there's still mm -hmm. that, you know, and so th it is a process. Yeah, forgive and forget, And we they pray say. the Lord's forgive prayer. And God, you forgive us yes. our debts as we have Forgiven forgiven others. other people. Don't Boy, I wish we don't. could all walk in this. And who has who has been forgiven of much right. forgives yeah. others yeah. of yeah. much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just we right. have to do. Wow, I like this. Believers. I like this. Forgive and forget. I'm pretty good at it's the not forgetting. Easy. It's no, it's hard. No. I mean, right. it's, I'm it's, not good at the forgetting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at the forgetting. I am. I'm better at I'm the not. forgetting mm -hmm. than I am the forgiving, oh. in a way. But um, one thing I am good at mm -hmm. is I have a four-leaf clover. My dad. Irish, uh -oh. and I have the four-leaf clover <laughs> right next to my crucifix oh. on my keychain. Oh. Okay, but I do. So, and I did, I think I've talked about my Bubba, my it's beloved Bubba, who I took to bingo all the time, so she had the bingo bag. And not only did she take out the daubers, okay, she had this little charm and this little guy and this little guy, and um, we really never won too much. But is it okay to Some have a lucky, lucky charm? don't work. No, no, not really. They I don't, think no. yours is more sentimental yes. than feeling that it's yes. lucky. But I yes. do have a scripture. Exodus 24 says, you shall not make an image in the form of anything in heaven above, earth beneath, or the waters below. So we cannot put our faith or our confidence in some sort of charm. Mm -hmm. Our confidence comes in the unseen living God. Right. right. And right. if we don't, if these charms become an idol or they become a place of worship or a place of you're going to get some luck or favor from it, then I think it's absolutely well, wrong. Well, lucky numbers could be the same too. People have lucky numbers. What kind of charms do people carry? I must be out of the Rabbit's loop. Foot. 
You know, <laughs> they're still around. I thought those yes. were a product of the 90s. I don't Anything know. that Rats. you're putting faith in, <laughs> right. like dirty like socks, as for if you should players. be putting faith <laughs> oh. in in God. So, do, should we have Lucky Charms? Of course not. We're we're not supposed to. And if you don't understand that, study out the New Testament church and see what Paul and them burned up. Right. We just we need have... Lucky Charms cereal. Oh, yes. Wow, yes. 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 Do you know they sell just the dehydrated marshmallow things? Oh, so oh, well, yeah. that's Lucky Charms, but, but I just said <laughs> that about the lucky number real quick because we live in a football town, and if we mm -hmm. win, then we have to sit in the same chair and wear the same <laughs> shirt. I'm sorry, but we do. That's so, like superstition. Oh, 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 okay. You are watching Christian television. You are okay. You might think I'm crazy. You're a deliverance after the show. You might think I'm crazy, and people probably are going to think this, but I literally don't even let my kids use the word luck. Yeah. Because I don't believe in luck whatsoever. No, that's not what I teach them. I teach them there is no luck. You you control. You make what of your life it's not something it's not some number right. you make choices and control your life through the Lord so we don't say the okay. word luck. well I am still sitting in the same chair and um, <laughs> she still has a and I'm still on. wearing and I'm still wearing my black and gold beads sweat? okay but uh, it's all right because you know what I'm real and I'm telling you the truth That's and this true. is how I feel okay but but this last question for you is comes from Proverbs it's 1914 we say the number so you can look it up um, houses and riches are an inheritance from fathers but a prudent wife is from the Lord so what does prudent wife mean to you girls. The definition of prudent is cautious, careful, wise, sensible, um, thrifty, economical, extravagant. I'm thinking, yes, why do we put the prudent wife Because it sounds down. cheap. It's not, Wait a prudent minute. sounds economical like cheap. Economical and extravagant yeah. economical? are opposites. Yeah. Wise, thrifty, cautious, extravagant, extravagant, careful. Not extravagant. I'm <laughs> discreet, Shrewd. sober. These are all definitions. Also, are you uh, looking at the Webster's also, dictionary? I'm looking at, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking yes. at the dictionary. Back, 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 back. Back. Acting Wise. with or showing care about yes. something. Right. That's prudent. I mean, oh, be careful. Sure. Sure. And I, yes. I think when you're Wise. reasonable in your speech and reasonable in your conduct, mm -hmm. it's thought through, it's thoughtful, it's mm -hmm. careful. It is cautious, but it does state the truth. I think that's prudence. I and it's similar to wisdom. I'm sorry. Yeah, go, go. I apologize. I think prudence is the thing that makes you a good thing. And the <gasps> Word of God says that he that findeth a wife findeth a good, good thing. thing. Yes. And so to be a prudent woman of God, to be practical in my affairs, to be sober, to mm -hmm. be discreet in how I carry myself, that's mm -hmm. all a part of the characteristics okay. of God that you want to have in you as a woman and that a, a man would want to have in his wife. So yeah. a man wants a prudent wife, he just doesn't want a prude. That's right. Oh, yeah. Make it plain. Oh. Make it plain. Oh. And it okay, says, good. And it, and it says a prudent person is sensible, it flees evil. Yeah. That's right. And the oh, naive go right. and suffer the consequence. Yes. So you have to f flee evil as well. Wow. Okay, well, I love the definitions of prudent. I think prudent. the prudent wife gets a good rap with, he, with yes. us. So yes, I mean, yes. Well, no do, you see, do you see what I mean? That this panel of women use the word of God to determine how we live and how we think and how mm -hmm. we speak. And I wonder what you think about how we live and how we think. Oh. <laughs> and you can let us know, s2s at ctvn.org. We would love to hear from you. But don't go away, because we're going to wrap this up right after this. We always like to end sister to sister with a scripture. Today it's from the book of Matthew, verses five, uh, chapter five, verses six. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. He is food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. Mm -hmm. We pray that you work up a deep, rich appetite for God who will satisfy you richly with good things. Yeah, and this was a really good show today. <laughs> I am so lucky yeah. to have I am lucky I'm blessed. I am highly blessed and highly favored, especially because you're watching us today. We are sister to sister. And we also have another saying that we end the show, and it goes as iron sharpens iron. So does the countenance of one sister sharpen the other. Tune in every week. See you again.